Hey guys, my name's Daniel. Um, a one week post operation after quadriceps tendon uh, rupture and repair surgery. And I'm making this video for those of you who might be on a similar uh, journey. And hopefully you can get an idea what to expect. And also this will be good for me. Help me be patient because I know that it's a long recovery process. Uh, so in this video, I would like to share um, just about my injury in specific and then also my long-term goals and short-term goals with, um, with my recovery process. Also some of the experiences I had navigating the healthcare system uh, and decisions that I made to try to do that and hopefully you can, you can learn from these as well for your journey as well as sharing my kind of day-to-day -day experiences for the first uh, few days and then also some of the guiding lights or quotes that uh, people shared to me that have really helped me to to proceed. So a little bit about me, I'm around 40 years old and I have a very active life. I'm self-employed, so I am able to work from home, but also for my job, I travel quite a bit and, um, and use my body quite a bit. And I'm very active recreationally um, as well. I'm not a professional athlete, but I do a lot of active stuff. So um, my injury happened uh, just about two weeks ago. I was jumping on the diving board and pretty aggressive jumps and my foot slipped, my front foot slipped and my back foot was uh, flexed or, or, or bent. If this was my leg, uh, it was bent at the knee and it just kind of completely bent under my body. My full weight came on it and the term is hyperflexed the quad. And so immediately I felt a sharp searing pain, hot pain. I did not feel a pop or hear a pop, uh, but I did feel the pain. And I had felt that pain before about 15 years ago when I learned that I had torn my hamstring. And so at that time, 15 years ago, I did nothing about it. I just thought it was a strain. I didn't have insurance or good health care at the time. And so I didn't do anything. So today, to this day, I live with part of my hamstring is uh, not attached and that does limit my lifestyle somewhat so I didn't want to make that same mistake this time and so I um, immediately went to uh, get care and my um, I was able to still kind of walk or limp uh, carefully so I limped away from the pool and got in my uh, vehicle and and drove to a place called urgent care I, I had a decision to make what where should I go? It was a weekend. The hospitals and specialists were closed. Um, I didn't go to the ER, but I went to a place called Urgent Care, which is kind of like a mini ER. If I had to do it again, I would have found an urgent care that has MRI facilities. Uh, the one that I went to only had uh, x-ray and ultrasound. If I had gone to a place that had MRI, I probably could have gotten my surgery a week earlier or or a um, long time earlier, but regardless. So I went to the urgent care. They did an x-ray, they found no bones were broken. Uh, they did an ultrasound um, and didn't f find that the ACL was torn. So the diagnosis from the urgent care doctor at that time was that I had a strained quadriceps. Um, and just, it's, just to explain a little bit about the different types of injuries, you can have a strain, you can have a tear, and you can have a rupture. And these are three different words. A strain is maybe a stretch or torsion in, in, in your tissue, maybe just a muscle. Um, it's the lowest severity, and usually it will heal, heal on its own. A tear just means that. It's like if you have a piece of paper and you tear it. It doesn't mean you tore it apart. It just means it's torn. There's a tear in it. And a rupture means that it's completely separated. So he said, you may have, you have a strain, you may have a tear. So he didn't treat it very seriously. And um, that was probably not good. Uh, so he gave me some ibuprofen and a knee immobilizer and said, I can pursue the orthopedic specialist. So I got an appointment with, with the orthopedic specialist three days later. It would have been nice if it was the next day, but um, basically for three days, I was kind of walking around in this knee immobilizer uh, and doing, doing my thing, 
thinking that it's not a big deal. Uh, meanwhile, it still hurt. I would, would get stabbing, kind of nine out of 10 pains whenever I passively flexed my knee or whenever I actively engaged the quad. Um, so in retrospect, I should not have done all that moving around, but I did. Um, so three days later, when I got to the orthopedic specialist, they also poked around and they um, gave me a script for an MRI. I was able to call a few places. Some of them didn't have space for like two weeks. Uh, but finally, I was able to find a place that got an MRI the, the following day. And so I went there. Within an hour after the MRI, they, the radiologist gave me the, the readout and it said it was a high grade uh, tear. There was a lot of injury in the whole leg. So my muscles were, were torn and injured. My fascia, the connective tissue in the leg was torn and kind of traumatized. And then also the tendons were um, high grade tear, not a rupture, but a high grade tear. And so, um, Again, I talked to the specialist. They said, oh, we can, we can look at your MRI four or five days later, and then maybe we can get you surgery by three weeks after the injury. Um, in, in my research, trying to decide, am I going to just do physical therapy? Am I not going to do anything? Am I going to get surgery? I realized that with a tendon tear, uh, it's, it's kind of, um, tendons are like super fibrous, uh, tissue. And so when it tears, it can either rupture, completely separate, or it can kind of partially, partially tear. Some, some of the fibers would retract. And in my case, these, these fibers were like more than an inch retracted from each other. So there's no way, even with PT, that it's going to somehow kind of reattach. Um, so with that logic, I decided to get the surgery. And, um, I called around one of one of the guiding lights. My my friend said, you need to get the best care that you can um, and you need to drive your own medical process. So that's a quote I would share to you as well. You need to drive your own uh, recovery and healing process. No one else is going to look out for you. Even the doctors are not going to look out for you as much as you look out for yourself. So <clears throat> through research, I spent almost a day uh, researching this injury and researching the doctors in my area. And I eventually found what I think is the best doctor for this type of injury at the best hospital. And I called them up first thing in the morning and they said, come in <clears throat> right away. Can you come? So I drove three hours away to, to get this specialist to look at my MRI. And I was very happy that I did. They were able to fit me in for surgery within a couple of days. And so uh, I was able to get surgery um, eight, eight days after the, uh, <clears throat> the injury. And so that what they say, the research says you should get this repaired two to three weeks after. And I, I was very happy that I got a good doctor and able to, to get it done. Well, uh, if I had just kind of gone with the system and the first recommendations, I, I would have been three weeks out and I would have probably continued to further injure it in the intervening time. So, um, I'll end this video here. Uh, that was, was my experience with the injury, with the decision-making process, and uh, leading up leading up to surgery. So up, up till that time, I was in a knee immobilizer and taking ibuprofen.